You're all set up again. Does someone have their TV on? I hear an echo. No. No. Okay, stop. All right. You're all set. All right, I'll call the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for Wednesday, August 23rd, 2023. To all persons interested in or affected by the action of the Zoning Board of Appeals, you are hereby notified pursuant to Section 11 of Chapter 48 of the General Laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and all amendments thereto that a public hearing on the following appeals will be held on Wednesday, August 23rd, 2023. The Zoning Board of Appeals public hearing will be held by remote participation methods. Public access to this meeting shall be provided in the following manner. The meeting will be televised via channel 18. I believe it might now be channel eight um, and may be viewed via the channel 18 website at http colon slash slash streaming 85.townofbarnstable.us slash cablecast public site. Real-time access to the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting is available by utilizing the Zoom link or telephone number and meeting ID provided. Public comment can be addressed to the Zoning Board of Appeals by utilizing the Zoom link or telephone number and meeting ID. The Zoom link is https colon slash slash town of Barnstable dash us dot zoom dot us slash j slash eight three nine five one four six four eight eight zero or calling eight 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 four seven five four four nine nine and entering the meeting ID eight three nine five one four six four eight eight zero applicants representative and individuals required or entitled to appear before the zoning board of appeals may appear remotely and may participate through accessing link or telephone number provided above documentary exhibits and or visual presentation should be submitted in advance of the meeting to anna.brigham at town.barnesville.ma.us so that they may be displayed for, for remote public access view copies of the applications are available for review by calling 508-862 4682 or email anna.brigham at town.barnstable.ma.us. I'll first call the meeting to order with an introduction of board members present, um, Aaron Webb. Present. Denise Johnson. Present. Paul Pennard. Present. Herb Bodenseek. Present. And Larry Hurwitz. Present. All right. So we have. Um, and I'm, I'm chairing the meeting. Um, so we have five, five, we have six members present currently. Um, notice of recording. Please note this meeting is recorded and broadcast on channel 18 in accordance with MGL chapter 30A, section 20. I must inquire whether anyone is taping this meeting. Please make their presence known. Seeing none, um, the first order of business was minutes from July 26, 2023. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? So move, Paul. A second. Denise, second. All right, and a roll call vote. Herb Bodensee. In favor. Paul Pennard. In favor. Aaron Webb. In favor. Denise Johnson. In favor. Larry Hurwitz. Yeah, I don't Larry, think Larry's there. on. Yeah. Okay, well, and I am in favor. So the, the um, minutes are approved. Um, we have no old business tonight, so moving straight to new business. In appeal number 2023-018, Cape Cod Five Cent Savings Bank has petitioned for a variance in accordance with Section 240-65 signs in B, U, B, H, B, H, O, and S, D, one, sorry, uh, one districts. Petitioner seeks a variance to allow for four signs where two are allowed and to install an oversized directional signs to replace existing directional signs. Shelby property is located at 157 Falmouth Road, Hyannis, Massachusetts, as shown on assessor's map 311 as parcel 075. It's located in the residence B, RV zoning district, and the highway business HB zoning district. Uh, so sitting on this will be our regular members, Herb Odense, Paul Pennard, Aaron Webb, and we'll have Denise sit on this because I'm not sure what the status of Larry is. Um, and I'm not sure who we have here. I see Mr. Tallerman. Bert, if you want to go ahead and introduce Seth. Sure. Um, so we have um, Gary McCoy from uh, Poyant, who's going to be doing the uh, kind of the intelligent talking here. Um, I am the uh, president of Cape Cod Five. I'm here to uh, answer any questions that might might come up. And uh, with we with me are my colleagues, 
uh, Andrea Ponte, who runs operational services for the bank and is involved in kind of all uh, building and uh, related and permitting activities, and uh, and and Chris Raber, who is our head of real estate. So um, I'll go back to you, Mr. Chair, and uh, Gary's going to do the talking for us. All right, Gary, whenever you're ready. Hi, good evening. Thank you. Um, I didn't know if we were going to, do you guys pull up the drawings or does everybody have the drawings handy in front of them or have, has had a chance? I to have them in front of me. Um, Anna can screen share if, if you'd like us. She can usually put it up onto the screen. Yeah, if if, if need be, that's fine. If not, yeah. that, that that's fine too. I think um, if everybody's reviewed the package, uh, what we're really looking to do here is replace some signs that are existing on the building with some signs that are basically uh, a little bit smaller than what's there today, um, but in the same location. And um, likewise with the directional signage, uh, the directional signage that we're proposing is a little, a little bit different, um, a little more modern. It doesn't have the little pole sticks that you usually see. Um, so it's a little more uh, contemporary looking, matching the color scheme and whatnot of the building and the logo. Um, so the fact that most of this or all of this stuff is existing, it's really just a just an upgrade. Um, the, I think you guys probably got the full package, you know, that has the ground sign in it and, uh, you know, one of the other wall signs, but we already have permits for those. So we're really just talking about these directionals and the two non-lit signs on the building. Um, I can go through the directionals uh, that we're requesting. There are four of them that are located at two curb cuts, uh, one on the west side of the building one, um, and another pair on the east side of the building. So that's four signs there. And then there are two additional ones one that you will see as you're exiting the drive through uh, canopy so to direct you out of property. And then there's also one internal of the parking lot to direct you to get to the, uh, the drive through canopy itself. Pretty, pretty typical stuff um, is, uh, as it relates to uh, directional signs. And then the two signs that we're proposing on the building as replacements, again, uh, basically like for like of what you have currently or what we have currently, uh, just a little bit more of a modern look. Uh, and the signs are actually a little bit smaller. Um, I know we've got criteria we have to meet to, uh, to, to secure the variance. And um, I'd like to go through the three uh, criteria if you'd like. Um, I think that'd be helpful. Okay, great. So the, the first one is, you know, related to topography or conditions of the uh, the land or the job site um, with it, where it's located. And this particular uh, business is about 120 feet set back from the street. So we have a significant setback. Uh, most of the businesses along that road are what we refer to as streetscape. You know, so they're, right, they're right up close to the road and they're easily viewed uh, from the street. Uh, we also have mature uh, plantings. Uh, this bank's been here for over 20 years, so there's some mature trees out front. So uh, on number one, um, we're looking at those a uh, couple of items as a uh, hardship as it relates to the property conditions. Uh, the second uh, criteria is that um, the bylaw would involve substantial hardship uh, to the petitioner and I would say the fact that we've always had these signs, these we're replacing like for like. Um, and if we were to be have to lose uh, one of the existing signs, um, that would pose a hardship to uh, the applicant. Uh, we, we think we're, again, just replacing something that's always been there. Uh, the third criteria is that the relief can be granted without sub substantial detriment to public good. And I would go back to that number two uh, uh, hardship that, again, these signs have been here for over 20 years. I don't believe this created any hardship or um, or detriment, I should say, to the public good or the neighborhood. I don't think anybody's had any complaints. Um, so I think we meet that criteria um, as well as the pr prior two. And uh, 
with that explanation, I would uh, request or um, that you guys consider an approval on this application as presented. Thank you very much. Um, is anyone from the board have any questions for the applicant or representatives? I'm seeing Herb, Aaron, do you have something? Go ahead. I guess my only real question right now would be, are the signs illuminated that are currently in place? The signs that we're requesting uh, and that we're to replace are non-illuminated. There are two signs that are currently permitted on the job site or at the bank, I should say, that are, are illuminated. One is the ground sign, yep. which is already permitted. And then there's a sign over the main entrance on the north facade of the building over the doors. Uh, that has a halo illumination, but those are already permitted. So we're not asking uh, relief on those. And the smaller directional signs will be illuminated from the on the top or? So no, no, nope. yeah. sorry. Go yeah. ahead. Thank you. Yep, I see that. I'm looking at the, the street, uh, Route 28. Um, street sign that is already currently illuminated and will continue to be obviously but from the inside versus a fixture on the ground yes sir Gosh. that's um, it for me mr chairman i have a question go ahead Paul. um first of all i wanted to comment that the uh, uh the diagrams of the signs with the person uh in the background and shadow is extremely helpful. It's the first time I've seen that, and that really, um, really simplifies uh, in terms of what you want. But I would like to go back to the hardship. Just would you state once again what the hardship uh, solution is? Uh, so the three, I'll just paraphrase them if you don't mind. Um, the first one would be the as it relates to the conditions of the property or unique characteristics is the setback and the obstruction of uh, mature uh, trees along the front. Uh, we're over 100 feet setback from the street. The second one would be that um, if the uh, ordinance was um, enforced uh, strictly uh, and we had to re remove two signs that we currently have that would certainly present a hardship to the bank. Um, so we're just asking to retain what we what we already have in place. Um, and then the uh, third criteria was that um, we wouldn't be uh, creating any detriment to public good um, because, and again, the reason that wouldn't be happening is because these signs have been in place for over 20 years. We haven't had any complaints or issues. Right. Now, the two signs that are being replaced... Or yes, that, that, would, that would have to be removed, I guess, are yes, dire directional signs? There are two signs that are on the building. One is on the west side and one is on the east side. They're up in the upper cable area. Right. Currently, they're like a circle over, oval type sign. Um, and again, these are old. They've been up there a long time. So we're upgrading them with a, with a fresh logo and a more modern look. We're just having individual letters instead of having a big placard. So the signs are actually um, going down in size, sir. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else, Denise? No, sounds pretty clear cut to me. Yeah, I don't, I mean, it, it's a, I mean, it's sort of frustrating that they have to be before us for it. Um, but I, I understand our sign ordinance and why it is the way it is. Um, I guess we can go to open public comment. Uh, Anna, we didn't receive anything, any comments, correct? That's correct. Is there anyone here to speak to this? All right, seeing none, I'll make a motion to close public comment. Second, Paul. And I need a roll call vote. Herb Odenseek. I'm in favor. Paul Pennard. In favor. Aaron Webb. In favor. Denise Johnson. In favor. And I'm also in favor, so that closes public comment, brings it back to the board to deliberate or make findings. Does anyone have any comments, or is anyone willing to make findings? Just remember, I'll it is a findings. variance, so we have to, you know, check our boxes on the three prompts. I'll make findings. Go ahead, Paul. 
Okay. First of all, there's I guess there's no comment from or no questions from the board. No. Okay. Uh, this has to do with appeal number 2023-018, Cape Cod Five Cents Savings Banks. Cape Cod Five Cents Savings Bank has petitioned for a variance in accordance with section 240-65 signs in B, UB, HB, HO, and SD1 districts. The petitioner seeks a variance to allow for four signs where two are allowed and to install an oversized directional sign to replace existing directional signs. The subject property is located at 157 Falmouth Road, Hyannis Match is shown map mass as shown on assessor's map 311 as partial 075 is located in residence B RB zoning district and highway business HB zoning district. I find that owing to the circumstances related to soil conditions, shape and topography of such land structures, and especially affecting such land or structures, but not altering, not affecting generally the zoning district, which is located. I find that the difficulty of having a setback of significance of 150 feet uh, certainly is a detriment to uh, signage and also the mature trees that are clearly in the way should um, also add to this problem. I find that a literal enforcement of the provisions of the zoning ordinance would involve substantial hardship, financial or otherwise to the petitioner. And to remove two signs, existing signs on the building, um, certainly would, you'll have to excuse my son's golden retriever who wants to end. Um, I find that these signs, uh, you know, why why remove them? I mean, they're, they're already there and, um, and they should be there. Number three, desirable relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good, without nullifying or substantially derogating from the intent or purpose of the zoning ordinance. I mean, those years, those signs have been there for, you know, 20 years. And by the way, the new signs look much better than the old signs. And so uh, I think the, the uh, public good um, would be enhanced by this. Those are my findings with conditions. Thank you, Paul. Uh, so Paul's made a motion to approve the variance um, based on those findings. So I have a second. I'll second that for Bonesy. All right, a roll call vote. Uh, Herb Bonesy. I'm in favor. Paul Pennard. In favor. Aaron Webb. In favor. Denise Johnson. In favor. And I am also in favor. Uh, Paul, do you have conditions? I do, I have conditions one through three um as outlined in staff report uh of some date <laughs> august 23rd august 23rd when's the august 23rd and um i want to know if the uh petitioner is an acceptance of these so yes i'm reviewing them um uh, in hand can I just interrupt for a second? I apologize. The uh, staff report is dated August 10th. I, I knew it. I knew it. I was just about to correct myself. <laughs> 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 yes, we, 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 we agree with the findings. Okay. Those are my conditions. All right. So roll call vote on the conditions. Herb Odensey. I'm in favor. Paul Pennard. In favor. Aaron Webb. In favor. Denise Johnson. In favor. And I am also in favor. Uh, so, Mr. McCoy, you have your um, your variance. Thank you for your time, everybody. We appreciate it. Thank you for the work to put all that together to show it to us in a very clear way. Great. Have a good evening. Thank you. You too. Uh, next up, appeal number 2023-019, Kevin Y. and Corey L. Vilsant have applied for a special permit in accordance with section 240-47 to accessory dwelling units ADUs. The applicants seek to remove and replace an existing accessory structure with a new accessory dwelling unit ADU. The applicants also seek to modify special permit number 2020-038 to allow further build out of the property for the accessory dwelling unit and additions to the principal dwelling. The subject property is located at 30, uh, 358 Flint Street, Marsons Mills, Massachusetts, that's shown on Assessor's Map 
one zero one as parcel one two one. It's located in the residence FRF zoning district. Um, again, Paul, if you're okay to stay here sitting on this, it'll be myself, Herb, Paul, Aaron, and Denise. Okay, let it rip. All right. Um, I believe we have the applicant here. Um, you can go ahead whenever you're ready. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Attorney Christopher Corain. I'm representing the owners of the property, Kevin and Corey Vilsant. Uh, they are uh, proposing to uh, raise and replace a accessory structure uh, to create a affordable dwelling unit, unit that is in excess of 900 square feet. And so we need a special permit under 240-47.2C4 uh, to allow that. We also are seeking a removal of a condition uh, from a prior special permit that basically stated, there's a condition that states that there's no further build out of the property. Um, I'm not, I wasn't involved in that prior permitting. Uh, so I don't know if that was just, that's just a standard condition in town. Um, but I would suggest that, you know, what we're proposing here uh, would not be substantially more detrimental. What we're proposing is, if not for the excess of the, of the 900 square feet would be allowed as of right. The additions that we're proposing conform to existing zoning requirements. So again, under uh, the uh, zoning bylaw, there was no condition in the permit, uh, the prior permit, these things would be allowed by right. So what we're proposing is uh, a, an accessory dwelling unit of 1,384 square feet. So 400, 484 square feet larger than what's uh, allowed as of right. The existing accessory structure is one that has 1,384 square feet. So we're not increasing the size of what's existing. The relocation will actually improve a non-conforming setback to Flint Street. So the existing accessory structure is non-conforming. By relocating the, the uh, ADU, it will become a conforming condition. So that's an improvement to the property. Um, we're also uh, stating, you know, by having an ADU, you know, we're also, it's a benefit to the town by increasing uh, the uh, dwelling uh, rental stock in town. So, and then as, again, as far as the additions are concerned, if there was nothing in this prior permit, they would be allowed as of right because they conform to uh, existing zoning criteria. Uh, so that's, you know, my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions that the board may have. All right. Thank you very much. Um, back to the board. Does anyone have any questions? Could you just review again what the size of the main property is in square foot and what the AUD is? So the AUD will be proposed at 1,384 square feet. The, let me just pull the um, application. So the, um, the principal structure now has 2,132 square feet of gross floor area. With the additions, that will increase to 4,404 square feet. But again, those additions will comply with current uh, setback requirements in the, in the RF. Okay. Uh, can you explain, there's an existing building uh, down towards the uh, pond. W what is that? I think it's a like a boathouse type structure. Uh, we're not proposing any changes to that. I did provide uh, a presentation with some photographs, um, but I believe that's what it is. We're not, as I said, we're not proposing any changes to that structure. Okay. So there's no living. There's no living space in there. It's just storage. Uh, yeah, not, there's no living space to my knowledge. Um, one just point of clarity, you had said in, in the beginning of your presentation, you had said the word affordable. Is this intended to be an affordable unit or? And then accessory, I apologize. Okay. So an ADU. Um, and, and they're intending to rent it? That is correct. And in, in compliance with your, uh, with your bylaw. Okay. And how many bedrooms is it going to be? Three. I think the floor, I think existing is two, but I believe that the uh, proposed floor plan is only two bedrooms. 
Well, do, do you think or do you know? I'm looking at it right now. The application stage three. Yeah, I think the fourth one, I, that may have been a mistake. I believe it's it. Yeah. I, again, I can't remember our bylaw at the top of my head, but I thought it, we were limited to two anyways, right? We, we are. We are. Two, unless, again, you get a special permit. So yeah. I'm just, I'm asking for two. Okay. You, you're, you're, I'm sorry, that was quickly. You're asking for two? That's what he said, yeah. Okay. Is there a is there a floor plan available for two, or is this... Yes, it was all submitted with the application. I'm just trying to look it up. It actually looks like proposed is two from the four plan I see on. Right. That's, what, um, that's my understanding as well. Kitchen, right. great room, master bedroom, bedroom with a detached sort of lofty type. Is it a two floor? Do you know? But with a living room in addition to the great room. I can't tell if it's a two story or not. Yeah, you know, Aaron, which which of the drawings I'm on the first document in the in the meeting materials. The one that says progress print guest house, right? That one? Correct. Yep. You scale down to page five or six or seven. Uh they show the existing floor plan of the guest house, which has a three bedroom existing, and then the proposed right is, below it, which is right page is. eight. Yeah, A, A3.1 has the proposed floor plan, which is only right. showing two bedrooms. So that is what the request is, two bedrooms. Okay. Okay, so we're going, we're going from three to two, is that correct? And two is allowed as of right. So we're not asking for a special permit to increase your requirement of two bedrooms. Okay. The only thing we're asking for is the increase in the, 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 increase in the size over 900 square feet. Okay. Any other board members have questions for the applicant? <clears throat> yeah, uh, Herb Bowensby. Um I might suggest next time you endeavor on such a special permit request that you change your drawings so that they don't say guest house and that they say accessory <laughs> dwelling unit I, I don't I don't really see myself uh, agreeing to anything over 900 square feet. I don't see why you don't get tit for tat when you're tearing a structure down. I don't I don't see um, anything that compels me to approve this, especially after the last uh, one in uh, 2020, where uh, it's that point you wanted your clients wanted to use the existing structure for overflow of guests during holidays and during summertime and things like that uh you know i might have been born in the morning but it wasn't yesterday morning so that's all i have to say thank you denise aaron no i'm just trying to understand that like we're giving another permit for a larger AUD than is prescribed, 900 square feet. What's the, um, attorney, what's the current square footage of the existing guest house? It's 1384, so that's the gross square footage. We're not changing anything, we're not making it any bigger. We're just replacing it in kind, other than relocating it, which again, will be a, become a conforming structure. So it is an improvement. Yep. And you said that the current uh, building one, the main house, is 2,100 square feet, but they have proposed plans to expand that house? That is correct. And they don't need a permit 
for that because that's all just pre Well, they do because of the fact that old special permit, for whatever reason, it has language that any changes have to come back before this board. So are we, uh, Chairman, are we, is that part of our purview here tonight or not? It seems that he's asked for that, um, but I don't, well, I it's don't not, it's not get on staff report. Yeah, but it's non-conforming because of the, the existing setbacks, I believe. Setback from Flint Street. But the existing structure is non-conforming. However, your bylaw allows you to make alterations to non-conforming structures as of right if they conform to existing requirements, which they do. However, the, the 2020 permit has a, has a condition in it that says any further build-out has to come back before this board. And I, I think that is mentioned in the staff report. Yeah, I'm just uh, we don't have we don't have an application to modify that special permit in front of us. And I don't think that's what was noticed. Yes, it, well, it should have been. It, it is in the application. Mr. Chair, the um, legal ad does mention um, that the applicant is seeking to modify special permit from 2020. Yeah, I see it there. It is in the staff the report. Further build up. I mean, but and so there's no other construction happening on site except for the accessory dwelling unit. And the additions to the existing main house. Yeah, I don't I don't think that that reads there myself. I mean, you're what I see the ask is for us to to re release the the build out for the accessory dwelling unit. Well, I, I guess it says in additions. Right, additions to the main. Well, so are we going to see plans for those additions to the they're original in there. structure? They're yeah, they're on there in terms of the site plans. If you click on the the second one down, the site okay. plan. Main house. Yeah, I got to dig through here. Then sorry, my fault. So, so it expands on just both sides, not towards Flint Street. Yeah, and it conforms to the setbacks as they are today. Again, they would have been allowed as of right if not for the previous special permit. I heard bone seek. Um, I don't. I don't understand your as of right. The only thing that's as of right is 900 square feet and two bedrooms, and there's nothing that you get as of right from the 2020 special permit. Right. I, uh, you need to explain that a little better. Correct. Right. So. As your bylaw states that a non pre-existing non-conforming structure can be altered as of right if those alterations conform to existing requirements. This only applies to the main house, if not, as I said, if not for the special permit that already exists. I think you need to revisit the 2020 special permit yeah, can you just summarize? So, is the barn structure the guest cottage? No, the barn structure is an additional structure on the special permit from 2020. I believe so. I wasn't involved in the 2020, but the the structures have always been there. So that's yes. When they mention the barn structure, they're talking about what that proposed ADU. So the barn structure was the ADU that was restricted. To not be rented out and to be only occupied from May to November, et cetera. That's the that's this structure that's going to be torn down and rebuilt. That's correct. And I don't, as I said, I wasn't involved. I don't know why those restrictions were in place. You know, we're we're not doing anything that wouldn't otherwise be allowed by this Bible. So who's been living in the barn seasonally for the past time period? Uh I went there and there was nobody there. I, it doesn't even look like anybody's living in it, but it would be my clients bought it in 2020. If anybody was living in there, it'd be guests of them. But, you know, as I said, I went to the property that was vacant. Okay. So are, we, are we approving it as an ADU? That is what the ask is, yes. So yeah. the ask is for an ADU, number one, and number two, to exceed the 900 square feet. That is correct. Yeah, I mean, ADU can be approved by right in a way, but 
mean, I also think that this special permit from 2020 almost has to be, you know, rescinded because that puts some very specific requirements on the on the barn. There shall be no expansion of the barn in footprint or an overall structure. Well, that's why we've asked to modify the condition. So you're adding 2,000 square feet to the main property and you want 1,200 square feet for the AUD. That's not changing, but the, but the barn structure ADU is not increasing from what's existing. So we're not making any increasing any making any increase in the changes of that square footage. So the only thing you're really doing is taking the auxiliary structure moving it so that it conforms to the setbacks and it's reducing it from three to two bedrooms. And so the ask is for the increase is for the, to make it an ADU is to increase it above 900 square feet. Now, if you didn't ask for an ADU, you could do all that as of right, couldn't you? If I didn't ask for the more than 900 square feet, generally speaking, it would be allowed as of right. But again, we have a 2020 special permit that it needs, you know, that I need to, to modify to allow that. Okay, but I mean, it could be a, a family something and and you could, okay. I think that you could have gone under the other bylaw provision to make it a family apartment if you wanted. But, you know, again, you know, if there was no special permits on this property, then all I'd be asking for is to exceed the 900 square feet. Right. Okay. So, so essentially they have an alternative to say they don't need an ADU to keep it a family and they could do what they want to do with it. Yeah. I mean, we granted, we granted them that special permit with, with that, that barn could be used for living purposes, but couldn't be rented and was only seasonal. I'm going from memory here, but I believe there was some issues with septic capacity and other concerns at the time. Um, and, and so. So with the new emphasis of the town and the change to ADU, um, to change it to an ADU would seem uh, appropriate, I guess, certainly in favorship. Am I right? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm sort of I'm just a little concerned procedurally here because it's not just the condition. Like, I understand in the condition of the 2020 permit, condition number number um, two says that the proposed redevelopment shall represent a full build out of the lot. But also, I mean, in the findings that relate back, I think, to the special permit from 1998, there was restrictions put in place that said that the barn shall not be rented out, saying the barn structure shall be seasonal, um, that no further modification could be done to it. There's no expansion. Um, so, I mean, I think we have some things that carry, but again, I'm, I'm not an attorney, so that's, I guess, on, on you guys to figure out if that's if just as modifying that condition number two is sufficient. So let me see if I can understand, if I can clarify this. What we're, what we're asking to approve is to make this, this bar, this thing, an ADU beyond 900 square feet. Correct. Our ADU bylaw gives a special apartment provision that allows them, if it's bigger than that, to come before us and ask for that. Right. Uh, and, if we think and, it's appropriate. Okay. And, and, and if that's, and plus, plus, of course, the main house. But um, and I, I guess I would, if, if asked to vote on this, I would say that that's okay with me. Does anyone else have any questions? We still have to open for public comment. Denise, you something? I'm, I get, again, I thought we had sort of the precedent that when we get an applicant that has a special permit and the permit states that it's been full build, 
as we saw two weeks ago, that we, you know, kind of feel like we stick to that. I, I don't know. I, I, I guess I'm just surprised that they're going to start from scratch as an applicant and build an ADU that we would, they wouldn't just stick to the 900 square feet at this point. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, I don't have any, I just don't, I guess I just don't have, I don't know. I'm just torn about the whole ADU family apartment. If it's been used up to this point for family overflow, all of a sudden that's going to change. I, well, that was the I, intent. I, of, that was the intent of the town in terms of making a whole section of ADUs. I know. I get that. I, I, I just yep. our use beyond family. It was meant to create more housing. Right. And so, so is, this, is this really going to be rented to the public, or is this going to be used by family members? Well, you know, oh. either way, he's they're requesting. I mean, I. I can't enter. Into, I, I don't know what perspective is, but they're asking for an ADU um, within the guidelines of the town, except that it's over 900 square feet. Right. Again, if they wanted it to be a family apartment, they would have asked to be having a family apartment. So they're asking for it to be an ADU. And again, this is adding to the town's housing stock, rental, you know, important to the town. And it, the, the bylaw gives you the ability to go beyond the 900 square feet. If the town did not want to allow that, then they shouldn't have given the option of having a special permit to do it. You know, and it's, is it more, is it substantially more detrimental? And we're not increasing its size and we're making it a conforming structure to, to Flint Street. Why does it need to be so large? I think they're just keeping basically what the existing footprint is and what's there now. But it would be really easy to have a small area of it that's not living space if they need to keep the footprint and reduce it. But um, well, they're they're moving it, so it's not the same footprint in terms of how you want to define that. That they're moving the structure to conform to the setbacks, and so it's a whole new structure. They're going to tear this one down, right? I believe Correct. so. Yeah. Here, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so so they're starting from scratch. So, I mean, I guess I, I again, it would be nice if there was some sort of rationale of why it needs to be so big, like whether you know they're the renting to someone that needs this big of a space and that's what the market's demanding, or they need to have an office in there or something. I mean, I don't really understand. I mean, 900 square feet is pretty sufficient for a two bedroom accessory dwelling unit. I think they're just trying to preserve the character of what's existing. So, you know, they kept it the same in that regard. Well, they can maintain the character at any size. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, all right, let's open for public comment. Um, Anna, I don't believe we received anything, correct? That's correct. And I don't see anyone here from the public to speak to this. Um, so I will make, oh, David, is there anyone here for public comment in the waiting room? No. I don't believe so at this time, no. There's okay. nobody else here. All right, so I'll make a motion to close the um, close public comment on this. Any second? Go I'll second that. Mr. Chair, before you do that, um, I mean, I, 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 obviously my goal is to get this project approved for these clients is, you know, if the, the 900 square feet is gonna result in a denial, I, I'd like to know that. And, you know, be able to go back to them if this board is, you know, satisfied that they can approve it at 13 at the size we're proposing, then you know that's fine. Okay, yeah. Let me just close public comment and then we'll have we'll deliberate on it and we can um we can weigh in where we're we're leaning. Um so I'll make a motion to close public comment. Um someone seconded second uh, Paul. Paul. Um uh, roll call vote her bodency in favor. Paul Pinard in favor. Aaron Webb. In favor. Denise Johnson. In favor. And I am also in favor. Uh, so public comments close. It brings it back to us to deliberate or um, make findings or decision. Um, do they don't have any sort of comments here? I got a sense from Aaron. He wasn't super in favor. Denise, you detounded not super in favor. Paul, you were well, uh, you know, it, it's different if you're just going to move the existing structure to conform. If you're going to tear it down and rebuild, 
then I guess I would like to know why it has to be more than 900 square feet. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think that like with any of these that come before us, it's nice that there's, if they come with some sort of justification of, of why, if it's, right. you know, I, I don't know what the justification would be, but at least an explanation of why that's their intent. Um, go ahead, Aaron. Well, again, I just to, to and I don't want to misquote the attorney here, but he did say that, again, he's, they're just trying to stick within the same square footage of what was currently existing. So, yeah, I'm not even not necessarily in favor of it. I just, you know, I wrestle with with, you know, prior issues and, and cases, I guess. And, so, and and, you know, where where we've had this come before us before talking about full build out. Um, and yet, you know, as the attorney's. I think rightfully pointed out we're they're really making no change to the property. In fact, in my opinion, probably bettering it, moving it off of Flint street a little bit further back to conform with setbacks. There is no public comment, meaning anyone who was notified of this applicant is not, you know, shown to uh, voice displeasure if there is any. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a, uh, I don't know exactly the lot per se. I, I, I think I know the area sort of well, but um, it's, um, you know, it's a pretty big open, wide open space out there. So uh, I'm not necessarily not in favor. I got to be honest. I'm, um, I, I do wonder why, again, it has to be that size, but I, as he's pointed out, you know, that's why. And so. Um, so the, the other, what they also could have done was just keep it as it is and change it to an ADU with the same no, size. It's three bedrooms right now. Well, they could so they could change it to two bedrooms, which is what they're going to do anyway. So they could say, okay, we're going to eliminate a bedroom and we want to make this existing structure an ADU. And they'd have it's to possible. lose the square footage too. They'd have to get it down to 900 square feet. Well, no, they could come back to us with the same thing. We want, we want. Yeah, you know. but they couldn't do it by right. They'd have to come back to us to say. Oh, no, no, a absolutely. So, so the decision would be, Okay, so they want to take a bedroom out and keep it that is this make an EDU. And the decision we're faced with, no, they want to rebuild it as an EDU. Yeah, it may not be where the structure itself may not be, you know, I mean it could be rehabbed, obviously, if it's if it's a barn. I don't know what it looks like. I haven't physically seen it, but the fact that they want to start over and build new is commendable. Yeah, so I see the problem we're dealing with is the 900 square feet. And so where do you, upon which do you make your decision? What's the criteria upon which we make the decision to keep it at 900 or to go over 900? And I think that's what we're all grappling with is, you know, I think it, so let me propose this. In this case, uh, to go over 900, means that they would move it to make it conforming in terms of setbacks, if that makes sense. Yeah, so in this case, they're moving it, conforming with setbacks, but it's still larger than 900. Right. Well, but but they're, they're moving it to conform it. Otherwise, it could keep it the way it is and ask for uh, an EDU. And I think that would be a tougher sell. Yes, I believe they would also have to have the restrictions on the structure removed because there's some strict some strict restrictions on this structure. I mean, I, I feel like this was even a two meeting thing last time, you know, racking my brain from memory here. Um, uh, it, but for, for me, yeah. Hi, and uh, uh, bone seeker. I'd like to just um re relative to what aaron said it's not replacing it with the same thing it's replacing uh a old structure with a new structure of the same square footage that is where the similarity ends the conditions of the 2020 special permit still apply until it's rescinded in some way we haven't run into this before, but I don't see, I just don't see any reason. I would be more in favor of leaving the existing structure and allowing a three bedroom ADU in the ex existing structure. I, 
I just don't see any merit to this at all. Any compelling reason for it to be over 900 square um, feet. Hang Allow on one me. second, Herb. Um, Aaron dropped off the call. Um, oh, did he? Come back, Aaron. David, do we know why? If What's going on? Uh-oh. Yeah, Aaron has dropped off. Hold on, I'm on the phone with, we're trying to get Aaron back in the phone, hang on. Oh, okay. Uh, one second. <laughs> I haven't seen him come. He's not in the meeting as of right now. <laughs> uh, so. David, Aaron's trying to get on. I think he might be in the. Oh, I see. He just, he just logged in. I'll bring him into the meeting now. All right, Aaron's back. That. Sorry about that. I just dropped. I apologize. Sorry. Um, Herb, continue. Sorry to, to stop you. Okay. Um, I don't know at what point you dropped off there, Aaron, but I'm really uh, pointing out that it is not a, uh, just a replacement of the same thing. It's tearing down a building, replacing it, with, uh, now I have to get back on track, <laughs> but um, it's not the same thing. It was approved before as a family apartment with very uh, specific restrictions. Now this is a totally different animal and there's, there's no reason just because the existing structure is 1,384 square feet, which I believe is what it was, something like that. Um, that they are by right allowed the same square footage, that, that's not the case at all. Um, and I just, I don't see any compelling reasons at all to allow anything over 900 square feet. Uh, if, it, if they were asking for 1,100 square feet or something like that, something more reasonable, but a 50% increase with really no reason. I don't know the rental market in Marson's Mills, but you know, what's your com rate going to be, comp rate going to be for um, a rental unit there, you know, 3%? Well, yeah. I mean, it just doesn't make financial sense either. Let me just add on to you, Herb. It's either 900 square feet or it's bigger than 900 square feet. There's no cut off line of, well, if it's 1100, well, that's okay. No, it's either 900 or it's bigger than 900 because you get into the same issue that we've had with swimming pools or anything else. Is it, you know, 1% over the the allowed lot coverage or is it 2.0 or whatever? So, so it's either 900 square feet or it's more than 900 square feet. It's not a little bit here, a little bit there. All right, Denise, did you have any thoughts? Well, I, I think what's important is the precedent, as we did on another matter uh, of someone building an AUD. I mean, we're going to get, we're going to continuously have these things come before the board. I think we do have to have a policy of, are we sticking to the letter of the law, 900 square feet, two bedrooms, or are we going to treat these individually and make changes to that? Because this is not going to be the last one that comes before us. Well, I don't think we stick to 900. If we stick to 900, then they wouldn't come before the board. Well, purpose, purpose of the but, board is to. But I'm saying, I think they're well, going to. Well, they would have to to convert the existing structure, though. They can't yeah. just convert the existing structure without coming to us. Well, maybe in this case, but to Denise's specific point, um, if we hold everybody to 900 square feet, then there's no reason for them to come before the board for that reason. And I think that's what Denise is basically wanting or hoping for that we that people don't come to us that that what town council created with their own intent and you know public work 
to figure out what the town needed was 900 square feet was what they decided and two bedrooms is what the town was willing to tolerate but they so, also but they also said that if you want to exceed that you come before us on a special permit case by case basis all right i think city, again what this is saying is like this is becoming a little too common potentially that everyone just wants a big one which that's beyond our pay grade to to be handling the town council needs to consider okay is 1500 square feet what a two bedroom is supposed to be these days and maybe they need to revise the ordinance well yeah i guess in that case yes but i'm just saying they're saying 900 but if they want more than that come before us so the, our job right. is to say okay what's what's uh what's allowed what what do we consider in each specific case to be over to be okay for over 900 square feet if we just want to say if we just want to say we won't consider anything over 900 square feet i think that's against what the intent of the town was but it's on a special case basis i mean is this a special case and if it is why well i think that's a different question jake i'm just addressing specifically denise's point was if it's over 900 square feet we should blanket say no and i'm just saying no that wasn't the intent of the town the intent of the no, town I, mean, was, I think we just want to discourage everyone from coming in that yeah. oh we can just you know oh don't just ignore that in the in the ordinance because we know we can just go to the zoning board and they'll just waive that for us well i'm you not know, saying wait, 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 wait a minute i'm not saying to waive it i'm just saying they have a hearing they want to they want to do what what the town has allowed them to do and it's up to us to make a decision I think what we're dealing with here is what's our criteria to approve over 900 square feet. I'm not, not sure we exactly. have that. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, my point is not that we're going to deal with every AD. It's that there are going to be other cases coming forward that want to use the AUD program, but are going to be outside the 900 square feet. Right. And and therefore, what is our criteria to say here yeah or nay? Right. Yes, that's Paul, my point. May I? You um, you said that it doesn't matter if it's one square foot over 900 or 1100 or 2500. That's a huge difference. It's a huge difference. You know, a thousand square feet, 900 square feet, 1100. Then you know how? What's the limit? So what's you the know, 1100 is reasonable. Well, what's uh, nothing reasonable here? Why isn't 1200 reasonable? Show me a reason why 1384 is. I'm just okay. saying. I'm just no, saying. But Herb, I, I, that's not, it's, that's your opinion that it's not reasonable. I don't, again, I, I agree with Paul on that. We either stick to the 900 square feet or one foot over is, is you know, well, it, it defeats the whole purpose of the program. I think we need to remember what Jake just said about the intent of this bylaw. It was carefully considered. They didn't just make this up at the town at one town council meeting. This was carefully considered and ironed out. And there was a lot of input and they came up with 900 square feet, two bedrooms. That was what the town needs. And then to what Denise is saying, do you want to have five of these appeals every every uh, session? Because that's what we're going to end up with if we just hand these out like candy. But, and I find uh, this one especially um, suspect after, you know, the first appeal in uh, 2018 and then the, I mean, 2020, and then the, don't forget the attempted one. I mean, this is basically the same one that they re withdrew uh, December 2022. That was so, but but our, role, our role is not to limit appeals. That wasn't the intent of the town. The town said, hey, there may be some cases which they want to go over 900 square feet that are okay. What we're dealing then, with- Then vote in favor. I'm not going to vote in favor. No, no, no. What, vote in favor then. No, no, no. What I'm saying is what what is the basis we're going to use to say it's okay to go over 900 square feet? And that's really what I was asking. And I think that we, we don't have any guidelines, you know, other than the six months that was that, that the bylaw was debated back and forth and, and how they tried to incorporate everyone in mm -hmm. town's con concerns by putting these restrictions in place. So I think it's a question if if we feel that 
each of these cases is a reason to, you know, ex expand beyond that. You know, if it was that the garage square footage of the footprint was 1,200 square feet and they're building straight up on top of it, that would make sense to me. Like, like you know, what are they going to like jog in somewhere or something? They're going to build straight up. And so that that's a situation where this it clearly makes sense. I personally think that was the intent of of the council allowing for things to come before us in special cases. Um, uh -oh. Where this is a new structure from the ground up, it doesn't mm -hmm. seem it's, mm -hmm. that it's not possible to just cut off 384 square feet or 484 square feet or it was. Um, well, yeah. and, I, and I agree with you, Jake. I, I have not heard a reason yet as to why this new structure should be more than 900 square feet. And, and the other thing is, I believe the town council's intent was to create more affordable housing. If you're going to up the, the footage, a square footage, does that mean it's going to be in a different price range for rental? Yeah, there was an, an intent for some attainability for sure. There was no affordability tied to it per se. Um, but but yeah, that was definitely to create more housing to make our community livable. Yeah, yeah. So to, Her to Herb's point, I would, if if asked to vote, I would say I need to know why we have to go above 900 square feet for this new structure as an ADU. So I'm going to just cut this to the chase here. Attorney, it sounds like you're going to be um, in a tough spot here. Do you want to withdraw? I mean, I would encourage you to maybe consider talking to your clients and come back to us with some sort of justification. Because I, I, again, I don't think we're totally opposed to doing this. We just, we really need some strong reasons why. And I don't feel that's been presented yet today. That would be my preference to go back, to not withdraw, but go back to the clients to either uh, get their feedback as to why they need it, or maybe come back with a plan that is 900 square feet. Yeah, so let's yeah. continue it. Do you think, Anna, what's our schedule look like if we're continuing... We have September 13th, September 27th, and October 11th, so. The September 13th agenda is quite heavy. Okay. And the September 27th agenda, I believe, has two items on it already, so there is room for the September 27th meeting. Okay. If I may jump in, Mr. Chair, is the, is the September 27th by Zoom? Yes. yes. I would prefer that only because... I, I also do a lot of zoning in Mashby, so their meetings are at 6. I do have hearings before them that, that day, so the Zoom is easier because I'm I can go close to my office. So the 27th would be preferable for me. Okay, that's fine with us. Again, I don't want to, like, hold your client up if they're trying to do this this project this winter or whatever, so I don't want to drag it on longer on our end. Um, so I'll make a motion to continue this to September 27, 2023. I'll second that. And this is appeal number 2023-019. Uh, Herb second, roll call vote to continue appeal number 2023-019. Um, Herb Bodenseek. In favor. Paul Pinard. In favor. Aaron Webb. He's frozen. Denise Johnson. In favor. <laughs> Aaron's frozen with his, <laughs> <laughs> look on his face. Aaron, make a move. <laughs> oh, oh no, he's gone. Oh, no. Uh, well, we have four. Um, yeah. We have four in favor, so that um, it's continued to um, September twenty seventh, twenty twenty three. Okay. Thank you for the time and um, and and dealing with our deliberations on that. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. I appreciate the feedback. So I will uh, talk to my clients, and we'll see you in a, in a month. Thank you very much. All right, next up, we've got correspondence. The Department of Environmental Protection has given public notice of a Chapter 91 license application for 165 Lake Elizabeth Drive, Centerville. And the South Wind Plaza ANR has been referred to the Cape Cod Commission as a mandatory development of regional impact. Um, any other matters not reasonably anticipated? Upcoming hearings, September 13th, Anna said is busy. That's in person, September 27th, Zoom, and October 11th. I'm, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Oh. Uh, roll call vote, because we're on Zoom. Uh, Herb Bonesick. I'm in favor. What about Aaron? How are we going to uh, adjourn the meeting without a vote from Aaron? Well, he, can, he can stay on. 
He can just stay on all, there you all go. night. <laughs> stay on all night. Leave him clocked in. Uh, Paul Pinard. Yeah, in favor. Denise Johnson. In favor. Larry Hurwitz. If you're there, I don't know if you're there, Larry. I'm in favor. I am in favor. Uh, so we are adjourned.